Okay, we've got ourselves the good old-fashioned Witcher 3, a graphical showpiece in its time, and still looking pretty decent to this day, although certain elements of the image definitely show their age. And one thing that stands out to me is the foliage and the grasses and things don't have a lot of ambient occlusion going on, which kind of has them lose some depth. Now, that's what we're going to address in this video. Now, this works in Witcher 3. It also works in a lot of other games. But back in January of 2022, I don't know what year you might be watching this video in the future, NVIDIA added to their GeForce Experience overlay in their game filters, so you can skip straight there by doing Alt plus F3, in their game filters menu, which I think a lot of people have never really looked at. And to be honest, I used to just think of these as basically filters you might apply if you were taking a screenshot in a game, rather than something I might actually want to use while gaming. Well, check this out. I just turned on ray tracing. How did I do that? <laughs> uh, well, let's take a look. So let me actually show you how you add it. So you click on one of your style presets, and at first there won't be anything there. So you add a filter, and they have a lot of options here. And the one we're looking at in this video is SSRTGI. That stands for Screen Space Ray Traced Global Illumination. And the screen space part there is a big drawback, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But let's go ahead and kick it on again. Check that out. I think that's actually extremely impressive. I think there's much more depth in the trees and the foliage to the scene now. And so a lot of people might want to try that out. But also watch the frame rate counter up here. As usual with ray tracing, we're taking a massive performance hit. But I think that's actually what's really cool about this. Ray tracing in a lot of modern titles is hard to run, especially at native resolution without something like DLSS. But I can lose, you know, what was that, 60 frames, 70 frames, <laughs> something, something like that, a huge amount, and still be over 90 FPS in this game because it's an older game. So the ability to make an older game look better by adding in something like this is really cool. You can also adjust some of these sliders, and I'll demonstrate that in just a second, but before we do, let me point out one of the downsides of this being a screen space effect. By the way, I'm fairly certain that this is basically the Marty McFly uh, reshade uh, that's uh, often used as a mod to games, but I love the fact that you don't need to download a mod to use this, it's just built into the game filter. It's not available in every game though, and I will show you a supported game list. And, and there are a lot of games, but definitely not every game. Now, what do I mean by screen space? So this gets access to the game's Z buffer, so the depth into the image. So it knows the depth of objects, and that helps it run this effect, but it only knows the ones that are on screen. Watch my mouse cursor down here. Do you see the edges of the screen? Don't look as shadowed that's going to be one of the big drawbacks to this method. Because the edges of the image aren't, um, might be having shadows cast on them by something that's off screen, that shadow isn't being cast. Again, because it's a screen space effect. It only has access to the information within the screen. Now, there's other little issues that I've noticed as well that I'll point out before we try out some of the other effects. Remember, the game was not designed with this in mind. This is being added in after the fact, and, and watch right here. As I transition between level of detail of the rocks, look at the rocks right above Geralt's head across the stream here. As I come back, do you see the shadow kind of flicker in really bad? And that's as that object's level of detail is adjusting because we're getting closer to it and further away from it. Let me, sh let me show you what that looks like without the ray tracing on because it's a much less obvious effect as the level of detail changes. As I go away, it'll probably honestly be hard to see through YouTube compression, would be my guess, but you can see it, the rock kind of fuzz slightly in and out as a few more um, shadows and little bits of detail are added to it as I kind of transition between those, those two scenes, okay? But it's really subtle in the game's actual image when you're just playing the game at normal ultra settings. But once we have this ray traced effect on, I think during that transition, it loses whatever information it needs to cast an accurate shadow there, right? As it fuzzes in between the two, uh, the two detail levels. And it does cause significant amount of popping there that is much more noticeable than anything we saw um, without this ray traced effect on. 
Now, I haven't really played with this long enough to tell you how well other light sources in the game and things play with it, so I don't know. There's still more testing to do, but what I do want to show you, before I show you the list of supported games, is what do, what do the sliders do in here? So what, what can we adjust? So we have the intensity level, and I believe the default here is 13%. If I slide it down to 0%, you can see the screen is, uh, you know, it's a lot brighter. So if you just want a much more subtle effect, like you thought that this was, this made the image too dark, maybe. But you do want a little bit more, um, a little bit more shadowing in the grasses or something. You can certainly tweak that to your taste, and you can go quite far with it if we go all the way to 100%. So we can tweak the intensity quite a bit. Again, the default is 13. I also like that this slider, I think you can kind of tell in the video, it's sticky. It sticks to the default. So you can tell where the default is as you scroll through it. It kind of pops into that one. I'll show you the quality in a second, but first let's play with the sliders. Notice the sliders don't have a big impact to the actual frame rate uh, compared to if I adjust the quality on it. Ambient occlusion, I believe, defaults to the 40% is where it kind of locked into place. But okay, let's pull it back, right? And then pull it in slowly. You can see, again, it's, it's having a big impact on how much of this ambient occlusion is occurring. You can actually make it quite intense if you want your image to look like that. I do think the 40% that it defaults to is a nice compromise. We also have indirect lighting, so we can pull that to 0%, and then let's look at the difference as we slide the slider to the right. It actually is brighter, it looks, as we slide this up. Okay, and sliding it back, once again, to the default of, I think this one locked to 15%. Now, fade distance. Okay, check this out. So I'm gonna pull it all the way down to zero. And then as I move it forward, watch that the distant objects get more shadows is kind of how I'm, how I'm viewing this. I, I think this is showing how far away this effect is being applied. At least that's what it looks like to my eye as I'm pulling it uh, forward and back here. Right, so out to about where it started, I think actually does reach pretty well into the image. So I do think the defaults that they had selected for this game really do look pretty good. Now the quality settings, to my eye, don't do a whole lot, but they definitely have a massive impact to the frame rate. Watch the frame rate drop from in the 90s to about 60 when I click on medium. Right, so we went from the, the mid 90s to the mid 60s. Now, it certainly looks different. It looks darker to my eyes, for one thing. But I wouldn't say it looks like significantly better to the point where I think it's worth that additional frame rate hit. Um, at least that's my impression of it. All right, let's show you this a little bit more in motion, kind of run through and test it out. And then I'll finish out the video by showing you a list of other supported games because this very much is available in a lot of games, not just this one. Although, like I said, I do think this is pretty much just the Marty McFly reshade mod that can add in uh, a whole bunch of ray tracing effects to other games as well. I'll give you some more thoughts while I'm just kind of running around letting you take a look at the game with this on. Maybe we'll also do some like on and off comparisons. So. There's a neat scene off, right? I, I mean, what do you guys think? I really think that that adds a, a lot more realistic depth to the image with those trees and the grasses and the distance. I honestly think if I replay The Witcher, I might try it with this on. It's really cool. Now again, this is the Nvidia overlay, so this is not available using this process on AMD GPUs. And I'd really love to see AMD maybe um, do something else like this within their software, have some, some more um, processing effects added in. But with that being said, you certainly could try um, just using the actual mods. Like I said, again, I'm pretty sure it's like the Marty McFly reshade mod. If it's not based on that, it's based on something very similar. So you can do this kind of thing through mods if, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU. And notice that this, like I said, this is not incredibly heavy. I would imagine that if you had a card like an RX 6800 XT, which I do have, um, that if you applied something like this through a mod, you could probably get it running reasonably well as, uh, um, anyway, you know, maybe not 90 FPS because, you know, RTX cards, better ray tracing, whatever. Um, 
Well, it certainly doesn't mean you might not be able to get playable frame rates and be worth trying out. All right, so I think we've got a good idea of what this looks like, what its pros and cons are. Remember, look at the edges of the screen. You are seeing those lightened areas at the edges of the screen. Now, I only see them when I'm looking for them. Honestly, when I'm playing the game, my eyes are usually focused in the center, and so the edges of my vision are not able to actually pick up on that halo effect. So, to me, it's actually not a big deal at all. But I could see how, uh, since I've pointed it out, you might latch onto that as like, ah, I hate it. <laughs> you know? uh, in which case, sorry, maybe I shouldn't have pointed it out. Maybe you wouldn't have even noticed it. But as a, as a reviewer here, I feel like it's my job to point out the pros and cons. Let's go ahead and show you what games support this. Now, the screen will probably go black for a second while I alt-tab um, through my, uh, to my uh, internet here. Now, why am I alt-tabbing to the internet? Because the best place I could find a list, maybe there's a better one somewhere, but this is the best one I could find, was at .esports article when this initially came out. So as of January 19th, so it's possible, and that is 2022, again, if you're watching this in the future, it's possible this has been added to more games since then. But I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down a bit and you can kind of take a look. There's a lot of games, looks like a ton of Assassin's Creed uh, games support it. And again, I really like to see that we've got, um, older games, because it's nice when you have the GPU headroom to run a game with increased effects, but the game just doesn't have increased effects. You know, hey, Bioshock Infinite, that's a good game. Uh, so I definitely haven't tried all these out. Maybe I'll try some more out in the future, but it's nice to be able to do something with your GPU horsepower to increase the visual quality of the game. And I love that you don't have to download a mod, and some people don't want to be like on one of those mod websites, especially if you need an account, and who knows what I'm downloading or how it'll work. Does anybody really want to have ray tracing effects on their card games? Do we really need, um, not, not, to, not to brag or anything, it's probably not really even a, something to be proud of. I, I got Legend ranked in Hearthstone for a while there, guys. <laughs> Back when it first came out. <laughs> but I don't think I missed ray tracing on it. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got some Metro games. Um, Hey, Monster Hunter World, that might be an interesting one to try out. I liked Neo, I thought that was a fun game. Some Resident Evil games. The newest one has some of uh, this style of, of ray tracing, I believe, in it by default, but the older ones, adding it in, might be kind of neat. I do have some of these games. So, I mean, this is quite a large um, selection of games, to be honest. I, I, here I am testing out Witcher 3, but there's a lot more here might be worth playing around with. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Hopefully this was interesting. Um, I certainly think I might play around with this a bit and apparently I'm having alt tab issues. It does, it does not want to alt tab back into Witcher 3. I don't know how that's showing up in the recording, but I better go ahead and just end the recording in case my computer's dead. Wait, there it goes. I I'm back in now. Okay, okay, we didn't die. <laughs> all right, I hope all of you guys have an excellent day.